Good evening from HTV. Police hunting the killers of Yeovil man Michael Fry have released a video of the victim taken just hours before he was murdered. The security video was taken in a store near Mr Fry's home where he'd been late night shopping. No one could have known this was the last time Michael Fry would be seen alive in public. 10.30 last Tuesday night in the M&W stores in the away Yeovil. The next person he was to meet was his killer. His home at 47 Cavalier Way was a short distance away. He was found there at 11.30 last Wednesday morning, tied to a chair and beaten savagely with a claw hammer. An attempt had been made to cut his head off. At a news conference today, an emotional Frank Fry gave more details of his older brother. A family-loving man, do anything for his family. He was a man of habit, really. He'd go to work, come home, visit mum and dad, and go to bed, you know, get up and do exactly the same the day after. It may be that the person or persons responsible uh, have been on drugs or a sniffing glue. It's so violent that uh, there is an indication that that may be the case. The 50 detectives working on this case believe someone must know who's responsible. They're hoping the video and Frank Fry's appeal will jog a memory or a conscience and reveal the person responsible for this frenzied killing of a quiet man. Marcus there, HTV News, Yeovil. The first anniversary of the Child Support Agency has been marked today by a wave of protests, mostly from fathers facing huge increases in maintenance. One wheelchair man says the agency may yet force him onto the dole. As the manager of an electronics firm at Carn in Wiltshire, Peter Stoneham earns a salary of over £20,000. But he says he's been turned into a pauper by the Child Support Agency. A newly divorced father of four, Mr Stoneham has been told to pay his ex-wife maintenance of nearly £400 a month, leaving him with less than £20 a week to survive on. Can you live on that? Well, ask anybody to live off of £75 a month. I think the answer is no. has to be. I, c I can see no way of, of surviving short-term, let alone long-term. Mr Stoner may be forced to quit his job. He says the only way to avoid maintenance payments he can't afford is to go on the dole. Throughout the West Country, large numbers of these parents have joined organisations protesting at what they see as the unfairness of the Child Support Agency. There have been seven suicides. I mean, this, this goes on. And, it, and the number of people who come to us who are really close, really desperate, really upset. And it's not that they don't want to pay. They've been paying. The problem is that they simply cannot afford to pay at the rate that the government is asking them to pay. There is a protected level of, um, of income in the formula which means that somebody would be placed above benefit level if they were working and paying proper maintenance. But I'd also like to say that in some two-thirds of the cases that the Child Support Agency is dealing with at the moment, no maintenance has actually been arranged and been paid. So I think there has been a concentration on a minority of cases, which has left the positive work of the Child Support Agency not having its case being put. The agency says the number of complaints it receives is tiny compared with the many thousands of women it's helped to get money from absent fathers. But the critics insist there's huge opposition and the demand for radical reforms won't go away. Peter Cullimore, HTV News. Police investigating the Gloucester mass murders returned to 25 Cromwell Street today to resume digging, this time at the front of the house where the remains of nine women were found. They were excavating a concrete terrace believed to have been laid by builder Frederick West, who is charged with the murders. A young offender from Gloucestershire who went on an African safari at public expense has been charged with burglary. The 17-year-old has been remanded on bail back to the Bryn Mellon Centre in Wales. Resorts and tourist attractions throughout the West are recovering today after some of the worst Easter weather for years. It's prompted calls for a permanent later date to be fixed for the bank holiday. Whenever it falls, Easter bank holiday weather has a bad reputation. This year was no exception. The moving date of Easter is fixed by Christian tradition. Easter Sunday is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox, any time between March the 21st and April the 25th. This year's bad weather has revived calls for a fixed Easter, preferably late April. As they battled against gales and squalls today, holidaymakers at Burnham-on-Sea were unanimous. They liked the idea. I think it's a good idea and 
like it, yeah. I like to call it the Easter. I think you're ready for the break after Christmas. Yeah, I think it's a bit good idea, but you can never count on the British weather anyway. I mean, you could have it in June and it, you'd get bad weather, so. Some professionals in the West Country holiday industry back the idea of fixing Easter. I think there's no doubt that the majority of people involved in tourism would prefer to see Easter fixed and prefer to see that uh, fixing to be in, in, in mid to late April rather than as, as early as mid-March. I think the, uh, a month later gives us much the prospect of much better weather and that's what we all need in the tourism industry is a bit of sun and, and, and warmth and that would certainly help. Those supporting a fixed Easter might well look in the record books because the last time the bank holiday fell late in April there were gale force winds and it simply poured down. John Doyle, HTV News at Burnham on Sea. Well, the wet weather was just par for the course for the West County cricketers. It's traditionally against them when they report back the first working day in April. The sun may have been shining at the county ground in Bristol, but heavy overnight rain had left Gloucestershire's cricketers searching in vain for a dry pitch to practice on. The county are desperate to show they're better than last season's 16th, but with Captain Courtney Walsh and Vice Captain Jack Russell in the West Indies, the county's youngsters were put through their paces in bleep tests organised by county coach Andy Stovold. At least Somerset could put bat to ball in the superb indoor nets at Millfield School. They have a new captain in all-rounder Andy Hayhurst and a talented squad that finished fifth last season. With Dutch giant Adrianus Van Troes to form a fiery opening attack with England paceman Andy Caddick, Somerset are looking for some tangible success. And that's all the HTV news for the moment. I'll leave you with that all-important weather forecast. Good night. There'll be clear periods and occasional showers tonight, but the showers will become mostly confined to the south and west of the region, with much of Gloucestershire becoming mainly dry. Temperatures will fall to between 2 and 5 Celsius, that's the high 30s Fahrenheit, with a grand frost in sheltered inland areas. Tomorrow there'll be some bright or sunny intervals, but generally there will be a good deal of cloud with a scattering of mostly light showers. Highest temperatures will be around 11 degrees Celsius, that's 52 Fahrenheit, but with only a light to moderate westerly breeze, it may feel a little warmer than of late. So, for the summary, showers becoming confined to the south and west of the region tonight, rather cloudy tomorrow with a few showers but feeling less windy.